Hi, welcome to this video production of the basic construction, design, and assembly of a portable photo booth. This photo booth just happens to be in a kind of famous design. It is a blue police public call box. First, let's take a general look at how the base was constructed. The base is constructed with 2 by 4s The overall dimensions are 4 by 4 And of course, we cut the 2 by 4s with a nice miter cut for a good, clean look. The cross braces are there, of course, to support the weight. However, we cut these braces thinner to accommodate the thickness of the floor so that when the floor is laid in on the top, it'll be flush with the top of the 2 by 4s Also, you'll notice here that there's small cross braces, and I'll show you what that is for in just a moment. And on the back here, we have placed a male plug and recessed it in to provide electricity for the unit. The electrical supply line comes in from the plug into a junction box, which feeds a outlet over here and two outlets over here. That outlet will run lights. This one will run a light and the monitor. The exterior outlet here mounted on the side is the outlet power for the computer and for the printer. Each corner has an L-shaped cutout which will accommodate the corner posts. Also there are dowel holes cut into those short cross pieces I showed you earlier. This is covered with a rug and of course your outlet covers. We now put the floor base in its position on a protective rug. The corner post constructions are merely two two-by-fours butted together. But as you know, as you butt these two together, one's going to be longer than the other. You cut the excess off to get a nice, even cut. This excess will become part of the door. Also, we have a stop that prevents the corner post from going past the uh, ground level. That's in case you ever set up on soft ground. You see, when you butt these together, you get a groove in here where they come together. If you take the time and fill it with wood putty and sand it and smooth it, it looks quite a bit like a 4x4. Halfway up the corner poles are these gate hooks, and their function is to hold the walls in place temporarily. And I'll show you how that works. Next step, we insert the corner poles. left. The basic construction of the walls consists of underlayment or lawan. The corners here are two by twos. This particular one was the excess cut off from the corner posts. These are grooved on a table saw and the lawan goes into the groove. Distance between the outside of each one of these wall edges is 38 inches. Once the underlayment had been attached to these edge pieces, we then went and cut out one by three fur strips, put them out, glued them, screwed them from the back. Here's a problem. We used one by three fur because we had a lot of them. Problem with 1x3 fur is that it has a lot of warps and bends and knots and the grain is very crooked. In fact, we had to use clamps to keep it straight. If you do this project, I recommend spruce. Spruce is a very light colored wood, very clean, tight wood, and also very straight grain. The top panel of each door, we cut out the hole for the window, leaving a lip. Inserted on that lip is this plastic. This is the plastic you'll find in drop ceiling lights. It works just fine. And here is where I did use the spruce for these frames. Good thing about these frames is this is a nine panel uh, box. Some people prefer six panels. And all you have to do is gently twist these and they'll pop right out and we can realign the panels to make them six. Over the top joint, we just laid a piece of stripping the overall height of the doors, thus the walls, is six foot eight. But there is a header, a two before header. And again, we cut a groove in the, in the two before so that the lawan would fit in it. We then have two pieces of stripping, one about a quarter of an inch thick, one about a half an inch thick. It'll give it a lap look. 
the top box comes out about three quarters of an inch. It'll have that purpose of giving that triple lap look, but it'll also serve the purpose of properly seating the police call box header. And I'll show you how that works when we assemble it. Once we had the front dried, I removed all the screws holding in the stripping and then filled them in with wood putty, sanded, and it looks, gives it a nice clean look. On this particular wall is where the monitor mounts. This plate replicates the plate the monitor sits on its stand. Here I've cut out a, a small patch and I've covered it with Velcro. This is where the wires will, will go out of the side wall, Cl close it up, and uh, the wires go in these notches, gives it a nice clean look. Atop of each corner of the walls are these eyelets with a turnbuckle. This will provide stability when we assemble the box. On the bottom of each wall are these 5 8 inch steel pins or dowels. You can buy them in a 36 inch strip and cut them into 8 pieces, that's 4 and a half inches. So you'll go up inside the wood and these dowels will now align with the holes that I showed you earlier on the floor. Next we install the walls and of course it goes a little faster with two people because you can line the holes but the dowel pins need to line up with the holes in the base. There's one and there's the other. Now this is where these gate hooks come in. They hook into the wall, one side, and then you hook into the wall on the other. This kind of holds the wall stable. The construction of the door is pretty much exactly the same the way the walls are done. Except of course you don't have a solid PCF too. So we constructed the door without the uh, slots of course because this, this portion has to move. We put it together, we put hinges on it, then ran a saw right up the middle and then placed this uh, trim over that hole so that the right door overlaps the left door. The decals were done uh, just very simplistically. Basically, carbon paper and a printout on uh, Photoshop. Just printed this out on a regular sheet of paper. They used a magic marker. Very simple, but effective. Now we go ahead and install. Okay. Now once all the sides are up, we need to initially hook up the turnbuckles and begin tighten them just a little bit. I don't want it too tight until we get the uh, police call box signs on. We'll get everything lined up. Now the police call box signs themselves. Pretty simple. It looks complicated, but it's fairly simple. Start off by one by six shelving for the top and for the bottom. They're attached together with a short one by threes. And you'll notice that each end has a notch. This notch will fit over the two by four edge of the corner piece. The distance from the inside of this notch down to the inside of the opposing notch is 38 inches, which is, of course, the width of the door. On the bottom, there are two tracks. This will help line up the walls. And this is the board that will overlap, helping to give that triple overlap look uh, on the front of the door. 
Now, as far as the police call box sign itself, pretty simple to do, a uh, very cheap and easy way is to create in uh, something like uh, uh, any type of graphic illustrator or Adobe Photoshop, a four inch project. And I put a border around it so I knew where to cut. There are four pieces to uh, do. You have P-O-L-I, I-C-E, public call, and box. Of course, these are the old ones. I do the two eyes so that I can overlap the eyes and get the proper distance for the word police. Once that's made, I'll transfer it to plexiglass. Once you have the plastic uh, sanded, you tape the entire thing with blue painter's tape. You then lay your guide over the blue painter's tape and then carefully, after it's taped down, take an X-Acto knife, cut out the letters. Remove everything but the letters. So what you end up with are just the letters on a clear uh, box. Then take a spray paint that's for plastic. Spray just one side. Once it dries, peel off the letters and you got a pretty cheap police call box. If you look at the back, you notice that it's open. A lot of people would put their lights in here. I chose to leave it open. Uh, we got to keep things as light as possible, as transportable as possible. Just the ambient light from inside the box shows up enough to illuminate this police call box. Now let's install it. You see these notches are now going to line up over the corner posts and the bottom grooves here will line up on the wall. So the first one goes down. You then have to line up the second one and the wall. And there's the first one. Now you'll notice the bottom of this police call box sign has now set on this other lap board that we had. And you can feel that it is flush, so this is properly installed. Now we just put in the other three. Now it's time to make sure that the doors are going to be square. You see this is too tight. So this is where the turnbuckles come in for adjustments. Now we have a good closing door. Next, the top. As for the assembly of the top, fairly simple. First, make the box, the outside box. And we did that by lining it up with the dimensions that we have on the top of the photo booth. Next, you build a interior box. You do not glue it together, just temporarily screw it together. And then you do something uh, that's very easy, it looks complicated, but getting these at the right angle and the right cut can be done very simply. And here's how. Let's assume this is the outer edge of the box. Let's assume this is the outer edge of your inside box. A very easy way to do this is find the center of this line and the center of this line and line them up. You then take the outer board that you want and get the angle that you want. Let's say in this example it's something like this. You then scribe a line on the back side here, scribe your line straight down and straight down, and you've got the proper angle of this long piece. Of course, it is to the outside of the board, so just take the thickness of the board, subtract it, then you have the inside of the board. Once you have all these pieces cut out, you disassemble your square, you screw them in from the outside, and then once it's all done, put it back together, screw them together, and you get this spider right here, these 
eight pieces of wood. You then attach it to the top edge of your frame and you're ready to fit the top of the box. Now once you have the spider connected to the frame, you've got to make the top. The easiest thing to do is take something like this corrugated or cardboard, lay it out and line it up, make a mark on this corner, a mark on this corner, and cut out your four pieces of cardboard. Then use the cardboard to properly fit. Once you have the cardboard fit just the way you want, use the cardboard as a template, cut out some Luan, and glue it right onto the spider. And in this case, because I wanted the edges to look a little better, I just put some simple molding to cover up those corners. And that's pretty much your box. The inside of my box here, you notice, is open. Originally, my intention was to put a lantern on top and let the ambient light from inside illuminate the lantern, but I just didn't like the effect. So I'll show you what I did to correct that. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and assemble the roof. And I have these marked. This is the front. And it sits down in a slot created by these top rails. This is the top assembly, very simple assembly. It's made of a CD case. It's my wife's idea, actually. If you unscrew it, there is a light in here. It is a pull cord light. And there you see it, it comes on. It works pretty well. We, we used it at a wedding. And it's just held together by these rods, and this top comes off. You can unscrew the top to change the batteries. And it just merely fits up on the top in that slot we created with a square. Just like that, and it'll stay there all night. So there it is, quickly assembled, a uh, photo booth police public call box.